Hi guys, how are you? So, who knows about the Raspberry Pi? Nice. Who knows about Node.js? Nice. Okay, let's mix, the, mix them together and make the Raspberry Pi TV. This project was built at Lamba Labs and it was announced at the Google I.O. Extend event at Lamba Labs. So, the idea, uh, to have uh, Raspberry Pi TV, you need to combine the Raspberry Pi, which is the hardware, the Chromium browser, because we're using web technologies to develop our TV, Node.js and Socket.io. Of course, there's, a, there's other stuff, but this is the main equation. The implementation. This, this will be our end result. Uh, this is our TV. Uh, layout, weather, time. And this is our remote controller to uh, search for YouTube videos and download them and, or stream them on the Raspberry Pi, play them, uh, control them. So, the stack, like I said, <coughs> Raspbian, Node.js, Express, which is, uh, if you have ever used Node.js, it's somehow like Apache for serving uh, your web content. OMX control, we'll see in a bit. And of course, we need few shell commands, like Chromium, we need to download Chromium uh, and run it in kiosk mode, we'll see how. YouTube downloader and OMX player. So, <coughs> If you're, if you're SSHing into your Raspberry Pi, you need to do the following first. You need to add export display equal 0, 0.0. That's because uh, you're telling the Raspberry Pi that um, when I'm launching Chromium, don't take that uh, from, <clears throat> okay, don't show me the output on the SSH terminal. Show me the output on the screen. And export means to add to the environment uh, variables, okay? Testing Chromium in kiosk mode. So to test Chromium, we simply uh, do Chromium dash dash kiosk and uh, URL. And before that, we should, of course, install Chromium. Uh, it's apt-get install Chromium. Uh, the same thing applied to YouTube downloader. But if, if you notice, there's a few parameters that I added. Minus O, and uh, this Chinese thing here is for uh, the name. I'm just putting the name plus the extension. Uh, the ID plus the extension as the name. Uh, minus F is format. Uh, there's a full list of YouTube uh, formats. 720p, 1080p, 320, whatever. So 22 means uh, please look for 720p. If you didn't find it, look for uh, the next one, 320? 320p, yeah. And of course the YouTube URL. Oh, MX Player uh, is uh, the native, if you want, um, uh, media player on the Raspberry Pi because uh, the video will be uh, rendered and on the GPU. If you open Chromium and you go to youtube.com and search for a movie and play it, it will be very slow. So, get ready, put your max mask on because we're diving into code. <sighs> so, uh, the most interesting part about this project is the connection between the the mobile device and the Raspberry Pi. So, in order to reach this school, uh, in order to create this remote, uh, we need to have web sockets. So, uh, who have worked with web, web sockets before? That's great. Socket.io is, <coughs> is a web socket library, okay? Uh, think about uh, jQuery Ajax, if you want, how it simplified things after uh, the, the, the booming of Ajax. You know, you don't need to handle uh, many browsers and stuff like that. So socket.io is the same thing, and it even works on IE 5.5, providing you with real-time, uh, making your application real-time. But of course, Internet Explorer 5.5 doesn't have web sockets, so it will fall back into other technologies <laughs> like Flash, X, uh, XHR, long polling, and stuff like that. So uh, on the client side, we need to say, uh, of course, we need to uh, add socket.io as uh, reference it as in the script tag. And then we can save our socket equal io.connect. And we connect to the uh, uh, our server URL. Okay. 
And we wait for the, we, we initialize the event on connect. This is needed for socket.io to start. And then I say when, when this is connected, emit the following uh, message, which is remote event. So I'm emitting a remote as an event. You will see in the next slide how I'm catching the event on the server side. Uh, and when I'm clicking on watch, okay, uh, this is uh, the event on click. I'm, I'm getting the ID of the, of the video, which I'm getting from YouTube API. And then I'm emitting back to the server uh, the message video with the following uh, data, action equal play, and video ID is the video ID. So catching this on the server, uh, this is like a small snippet from the code. Uh, on video, I get the data. If data.action equal play, which is action equal play, I'm getting the ID, of course, data.video ID, the URL, which will uh, play the video. And here, we're executing the, the previous command that we, we've seen on the terminal, but through Node.js. And the good thing about Node is that it, uh, it pipes back the response. So if uh, the video is downloading, it will tell you downloading uh, 10, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15%. Uh, it pipes back the response. And when you're done downloading the video, or if you have found the video, uh, do omx.start id plus extension. Here it's mp4. Start the video. Uh, now. I should mention something about OMX player. Um, I found on npm.org, it's if you want uh, where you search for modules if you're using Node.js, I found a very nice uh, module that I didn't, uh, shouldn't rewrite from, from scratch. It's called OMX control, which is simply uh, creates a couple of routes for you uh, for playing, pausing, and controlling the OMX player. So. Back to the client side. <clears throat> uh, another cool thing that I learned and uh, that I implemented in this project is, you know, there's a lot of uh, MV star and MVC on uh, in JavaScript like Backbone, Angular, and these things. But I wanted to keep the code simple because it was given at a workshop, and I wanted to focus on the main idea. So uh, I used Mustache. It's a very simple template engine. And the way we uh, we work with Mustache, we simply uh, uh, define the template, okay, and then uh, create a JSON object from the response, and append it to the template, and construct the, the template, then append it to the main div. So uh, moving to the remote, uh, I wanted the remote to be simple, no buttons, not a lot of confusion. So I wanted to use swipe gestures. Uh, then, of course, this is not a native app. It's a mobile web application. So uh, I, I use the following uh, library, which is qo.js. qo.js is uh, very similar to uh, jQuery if you're... Uh, 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 okay, notice the double dollars here. This is to differentiate between jQuery and qo. And uh, qo... Uh, will let you um, use the swipe gestures on your mobile device. And it's fantastic. Once I swipe left, I emit control action swipe left. And what happens is this swipes. Uh, this moves to the next one. <laughs> OK. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, the code is open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, please fork it. And you can find the full article on my blog blog.donaldderick.com and that's it guys may the force be with you <laughs>